Welcome Highbury and friends. It's Monday the 13th of July. If this is your first time visiting uh, Highbury Congregational Church Cheltenham YouTube channel, if you like what you see, please subscribe and share to your social media platforms. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 10 to 16. You might want to read it later on and digest it, chew over it, take it in for yourselves. But God basically is fed up with his people. He's tired of their sacrifices, their religious festivals, and yes, he's even tired of their prayers. What? When you hold out your hands in prayer, I shall turn away my eyes. Though you offer countless prayers, I shall not listen. There is blood on your hands. Wash and be clean. Put away your evil deeds far from my sight. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Pursue justice. Guide the oppressed. Uphold the rights of the fatherless. And plead the widow's cause. As COVID-19 was becoming a threat to our society, we were being told by our Prime Minister and those in uh, authority, the advertisements on the telly, um, please wash your hands and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Now, before March, it was often my complaint that people didn't wash their hands. So we'd be out at a restaurant or a pub, go into the toilet and I would get on with the things that I needed to get on with. And while I was in there and uh, getting ready, washing my hands, drying them, people would be in and out and simply ignore the signs that said, wash your hands, wash your hands. It's just something that you need to do. And if you want to experiment with how well you wash your hands, go out into your garden and get lots of dirt and just, just grind it into your hands. And you should be able to completely clear the dirt if you wash your hands well for at least 20 seconds. And then you might have to use a bit of a brush for underneath the fingernails. Washing your hands takes time and there've been some really creative ways of approaching washing your hands. 20 seconds is saying the Lord's Prayer twice, possibly quite quickly, but perhaps as part of the, the washing, um, we can call out to God in that. But God's not particularly interested in our prayers if our lives do not reflect a life of justice. His people were offering up hands in prayer and they were dripping with blood, with injustice. And God says, I don't want to know about your religiosity. I don't want to know how many times you go to church. I don't want, want to know how many times you read your Bible every day or how often you pray to me or how many Our Fathers you say or whatever it is that you do that makes you feel quite good about yourself. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in prayers that are enacted. So, what about justice? What about looking out for those in the margins, the orphans, the widows, the people who are homeless on our streets, those who are being affected by not having an employment, facing redundancy, those who are under threat of being evicted from their homes. Perhaps it even affects you. As a Highbury family, how are we responding through supporting our local food banks, uh, being involved in um, providing meals and identifying the needs. And this is quite difficult. It's, it's actually vexing me to find out where is the need? How do we identify that need? How can we support those who are doing the vital work of making sure that there isn't anyone who slips through the cracks? So how do we turn our prayers into actions? How is it that we get involved in washing our hands of blood, the blood of injustice, those who suffer the effects of what's going on now, uh, and of course, uh, possibly the, the, the difficulties that we'll be facing as, as we leave Europe? 
How, how can we be people who wash our hands and our Father becomes more than a prayer? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth is not just something we say, but something we do, something we live. Let's pray together. Lord, in these days when we wash our hands, perhaps as never before, as we focus on physical cleanliness, we pray that you would help us in our ablutions and rituals to remember that your call to us is not focused on buildings, is not focused on our rituals, the way that we worship, that your call to us is about ensuring justice for all. Lord, we confess to you that sometimes we're so wrapped up in ourselves and in the things that are matter to us that we lose sight of those around us. Lord, forgive us and turn our hearts outwards. And so we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And before we go, I'd like to thank those of you who've sent cards and messages uh, thinking thinking of, of me and thinking of my friend's family as they um, have the funeral today. Uh, it'll be taking place at nine o'clock in the evening, our time. So thank you very much for that. I certainly feel held up on uh, the wings of prayer. God bless you.